right now. A San Antonio teen shot in the McDonald's parking lot, <clears throat> excuse me, by a former San Antonio police officer has had to return to the hospital. How Eric Cantu is dealing with more medical complications. After record-breaking early turnout, voters are now casting final ballots in Georgia's Senate runoff race. I'm ABC's Justin Finch with the issues Georgia's top election official says are standing out with voters. Taking a look outside with live cam, 64 degrees at 430. Are we going to have another foggy repeat morning like we saw yesterday? Mike will let us know about that and have our forecast for us coming up. I think I got rid of the frog in my throat. Good morning, everybody. It is Tuesday. It is December 6th. Steph is out. Sarah is in. Good morning. Happy to be here this morning. Glad to have you here. And I was also very happy um, on my way to work. I didn't encounter any fog, Mike. Quite a difference from yesterday, yesterday. morning. Mm -hmm. There are still a couple of patches out right. there, though. So it's not as widespread as what we had yesterday, but where there is some fog, it's kind of on the, the thick side. So that's going to be the situation throughout the rest of the morning. And with the fog, maybe a little bit of mist. And then was it warm enough for you yesterday, by the way? Yeah. Oof. Yeah, going to be even warmer today and then tomorrow. So we've got clouds we can actually see this morning. Remember yesterday, we couldn't see anything really along 410 or even over by the airport. So Port SA is just three quarters of a mile visibility, two and a quarter Randolph, three in New Braunfels, perfect out there at the airport. So we're going to have to watch out for these patches to kind of uh, move around and get a little bit thicker at times. So even out there to the west, Rock Springs, zero visibility. Eagle Pass has some fog, but then most areas out to the east and to the northeast don't really have any. So again, it is more patchy in nature this morning but just be on the lookout for some fog to develop because we've got very warm temperatures averaging mid 60s. By the way, the normal high temperature is 66. So this is the high for today. Well, what should be the high for today and then dew point temperatures are well up there in most areas low to mid 60s and so when you get no wind really to speak of and very high humidity that's why we're seeing some of that patchy fog mold is on the low side update account comes out of course in a couple of hours so watch out for a patch or two of fog this morning a little bit of mist here and there temperatures will stay basically steady we've actually gone up a degree in the past hour but we'll be bottoming out at uh, 63 when it's all said and done then 77 for a high so we're going to be a 11 degrees above normal, 10 to 15 on average. Most of the cloudy skies, a little bit of sunshine. Like I said, it's going to be even warmer tomorrow. Weekend forecast, is anything looking like December? We'll take a look ahead in just a couple of minutes. Sarah, Mark. Mike, thank you. New this morning, an early morning fire sparked a big evacuation for some folks living in apartments in downtown San Antonio. Happened just before 3 a.m. in the 100 block of West Travis. Fire crews say the fire started on a sixth floor in a mattress in one of the rooms. The fire was knocked down quickly. However, about 25 people were evacuated. Three people were checked out for injuries, but no one was taken to the hospital. The San Antonio teen who was shot in McDonald's parking lot had to go back to the hospital. Eric Gantu's family says he was recently back in the hospital for three days over complications to his stomach and digestive tract. Gantu spent seven weeks in the hospital after he was shot in the stomach, lung, and other parts of his body. He was hurt after former SAPD officer James Brennan confronted Gantu. SAPD fired Brennan, and Brennan is now charged in this case. Brennan's trial date is set for February 24th. He faces three felony charges in the case, two counts of aggravated assault by a public servant, and one count of attempted murder. All eyes this morning on the state of Georgia, where a high-stakes Senate runoff gets underway today. As ABC's Justin Finch reports, incumbent Senator Raphael Warnock and Republican challenger Herschel Walker have wrapped up their campaigns, and now voters are deciding. Election Day again in Georgia, now holding the nation's final Senate race. An extended campaign for incumbent Democrat Raphael Warnock and his Republican challenger Herschel Walker. After neither won 50% of the vote on Election Day, sending the race to a runoff. The stakes are high and the differences between me and my opponent are too wide for us to sleep. This is about turnout, and, and now that means that we got to get in the game. Georgia breaking records with more than 1.8 million voters casting early ballots. The state's top election officials sensing voters are not only energized, but also informed, aware that Georgia's open Senate seat could tip or balance the Senate power scale. 
I think people understand that uh, 50-50 versus 51-49 is probably a big deal. The Georgia Senate race also shattering spending records with reports Warnock's team spent close to $170 million, more than doubling Walker's roughly $60 million. Political parties spending even more and deploying super surrogates. Former President Trump holding a teller rally for Walker. President Biden touting Warnock's record in an Atlanta radio interview. All the things that Reverend Warnock has supported are things that the people of Georgia care a great deal about. For example, to not have the prescription drug costs go up, actually come down. Walker closing his campaign by painting Warnock as a rubber stamp for Biden while separating himself from Trump and instead siding with popular Georgia Governor Brian Kemp. And now it's all in the hands of voters. Early voting so far appears to advantage Democrats, but high turnout from Republicans today could cut into that lead. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. Car rental company Hertz has agreed to pay out almost $170 million to some former customers. The settlement is over claims related to the company falsely reporting rental cars as stolen. The case has sometimes resulted in people being arrested, held at gunpoint by police, and sometimes spending time in jail before those false reports were worked out. Systemic flaws by Hertz are allegedly to blame, including not recording payment or rental extensions failing to track its own vehicle inventory, and failing to correct false reports to police. A Hertz spokesperson said the company is not currently dealing, detailing any specific steps being taken to prevent future occurrences. In Houston, the man charged with the murder of a rapper known as Takeoff appeared in court on Monday. Police say 33-year-old Patrick Xavier Clark was caught on camera shooting his gun the night Takeoff was killed. They say Takeoff was an innocent bystander during an argument over a dice game. A judge set Clark's bond at $2 million. Prosecutors say he was trying to flee the country before his arrest, but his attorneys argue that's not the case. Beijing's two major airports have dropped the need for departing passengers to show a COVID test, a negative COVID test. The changes come amid growing public anger towards the country's zero COVID policy. Only body temperature checks and scanning health codes will be mandated. Flights in and out of Beijing are currently running at a tiny fraction of pre-pandemic levels. 437, 64 degrees. Lots of people will soon be returning items they got for Christmas. How return policies are changing for some popular retailers. UTSA coach Jeff Trailer has now won back-to-back -back Conference USA titles and with UTSA headed to a bowl game, we'll tell you if he likes the idea of taking on a team with the same record. Take a look outside with Trans Guy. The big story yesterday was fog. Mike says we could see some patchy, dense fog, but that's the keyword patchy this morning. Not seeing any incidents pop up on our end. If anything does, we'll let you know about it. Now, far cry from what we saw yesterday. That's even more evident as we look outside at live cam. Looks like some of those little clouds are trying to move in near San Antonio International Airport. Welcome back. The UTSA Roadrunners are headed to Orlando where they'll face the Troy Trojans and the Duluth Trading Cure Bowl to kick off the bowl season on December 16th. The two teams are both ranked in the college football playoff with UTSA at number 25, Troy at 24, and both coming to the game 11 and 2. Coach Jeff Trailer, who's now won back to back Conference USA titles, was asked if he likes the idea of taking on a team with an identical record and the same 10 game win streak. No, that's not true. I'd like to play somebody not very good, and I'd like to win. <laughs> no, I'm not that guy. Uh, I want to play somebody not good, just to be honest with you. So, no, I don't want to play those guys. But we're excited about it. I'm a competitor uh, on that aspect, yes. But, no, if I had my druthers, I'd play the 5-7 and seven team that got in on their whatever it might have been. He's a good dude. With Will Stein headed to Oregon, Coach Trailer just promoted Justin Burke to co-offensive coordinator. Texas Longhorns will face the Washington Huskies in the 30th annual Valero Alamo Bowl, December 29th at the Alamo Dome. It'll be the Horns' sixth appearance with a 4-1 record, with their most recent appearance being back in 2020. That's when the Horns lit up Colorado 55-23. And for the Huskies, this is just their second appearance with their first against Baylor in that historic shootout back in 2011. We didn't get to go to a bowl game last year. We didn't earn it. Uh, so to earn a, a bowl 
a bowl bid this year. Uh, I think it's great for them as well that they that they get this experience against a really good opponent. We got a lot of experienced staff and uh, have a good feel of what the team needs to uh, continue to improve and be ready on December 29th. Kickoff between number 20 Texas and number 12 Washington will be 8 p.m. December 29th and will be broadcast nationally by ESPN. And that's a look at morning sports. Thank you, Mark. It's 442 and 64 degrees. Up next, we are talking return policies, what you need to know if your gift is not exactly what you had in mind. And up next, a first look at the fallout of the new docuseries about Prince Harry and Meghan Markle, which promises to reveal untold secrets of their exit from royal life. The Royal Rift continues after the release of a new trailer for the Harry and Meghan Netflix docuseries. ABC's Trevor Alt has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, the Royal Rift could be widening again. It's really hard to look back on it now and go, what on earth happened? Just two days into the premiere of Harry and Meghan's new documentary, the fallout is already here. There was a war against Meghan to suit other people's agendas. It's about hatred. It's about race. It's a dirty game. The six-part series promising to reveal untold secrets of their exit from royal life. There's a hierarchy of the family. You know, there's leaking, but there's also planting of stories. No one knows the full truth. We know the full truth. But why is the series already the source of criticism? I realized they're never going to protect you. I was terrified. It's all coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Trevor Alt, ABC News, New York. Well, as you do your holiday shopping, you're probably not thinking about returns, but retailers are, and some are changing the rules. Tell me our sides, Marilyn Moritz has a look at some of the best and worst return policies. It's bound to happen. That great gift isn't quite right. What's worse is if you can't return it. Nordstrom has one of the most lenient return policies. Generally, no time limit and no receipt required. That's the exception this year. Some retailers have made their return policies a little bit more restrictive this year, whether they've ended expanded COVID policies or they're offsetting increased costs due to inflation. What this means for you as a shopper is that if you're thinking of buying anything you might need to return, make sure you read that policy carefully first. Bed, bath, and Beyond used to give shoppers a whole year to make returns. Now it's 90 days for most things, less for electronics. L.L. Bean used to allow returns with no time limit and no receipt, but now customers have one year and only with proof of purchase. Kohl's allows up to 180 days to return most things. No receipt? No problem. They can look it up. You'll have 90 days for returns to Walmart, Target, and Macy's, but there are exceptions. At Costco, electronics and appliances have a 90-day return window, but for most things they sell, there's no time limit. Amazon is extending its typical 30-day return window just for the holidays. Most products can be returned until the end of January, but third-party sellers may have different rules. The best shot at getting that refund or store credit is to make sure you don't open any of the packaging and save a gift receipt if you got one. And it pays to know the return policy before you buy. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Take a look outside with TransGuide. Uh, not really seeing a lot of incidents pop up right now. Uh, some patchy fog, some dense patchy fog that Mike says you might encounter this morning. So if you are leaving in just a bit, make sure you plan accordingly and take it slow in case you do encounter that patch of fog on your commute. Yeah, Mike, in some of these shots, it looks like it's happening right now. It's starting yeah. to to develop a little further. You know, out at the airport, there's really nothing going on, mm -hmm. unlike yesterday where it was just about everywhere and really thick everywhere. Mm -hmm. This may be a little bit of a more precarious situation because you're just right. driving along, okay, no problem, and then turn the corner and run into to some of that fog this morning. So just be on the lookout for that. Out, like I said, out there at the airport, there is uh, really nothing to uh, to speak of, we've got some clouds out there. At least we can see in this picture, unlike yesterday. Visibility right now, again, you can be cruising along and then run into some of this fog over there on the west side of town. Uh, three quarters of a mile visibility, Port SA. Randolph, one mile. It's dropped somewhat in New Braunfels. So you go up 35, go out 10. 
going to be running into a little bit of that fog and then way out in the hill country rock springs uh, a lot of fog eagle pass laredo so it is like i said very patchy a lot of spots have a lot of clear skies no advisories are posted this morning but the weather service indicated obviously it's monitoring the situation to see if they want to uh, post any sort of an advisory dew points have gone up you know, yesterday they went up about 10, 15 degrees from Sunday's reading. So once again, we've gone up another 5, uh, 10 degrees on average around the area. So yeah, there's a lot more humidity out there. That's what's helping with some of this fog. So we got some drizzle hanging around here and temperatures are just going to be in the uh, low 60s and perhaps a little bit of drizzle still hanging around here just to take into account some of it, that little fine mist out there. Then we will see some sunshine later on today and we are going to be definitely on the warm side already up to 77 degrees. We are close to the normal high right now, which is 66 this time of year. A lot of clouds hanging around here this morning. Some sunshine thrown in kind of like yesterday. We had that little bit of sunshine, perhaps a bit more today, getting us up into the upper 70s. And then tomorrow we do it all over again, even though this doesn't really show it. We'll have a little bit of fog, a little bit of mist, some patchy fog around the area, then some sunshine in the afternoon. There is cold air in the United States, 16 below right now, International Falls. One below Cut Bank, even as far south as Omaha, 25, 28 right now in Denver. But the problem is this is almost a zonal flow, which means everything's going straight west to east. For the most part, you don't get any big changes around here. Here's really the, I guess you could call this the Arctic jet. This is where the, the northern branch of the jet stream is keeping that really, really cold air up there to the north. And we've got this southwesterly flow keeping us very, very mild. And this is really not going to be changing for at least about the next week. So what we have right now is what we're going to be seeing throughout the rest of the week going into the weekend. Let me jump ahead here into next week. There are some indications that we get a bigger trough trying to develop and move on in here by Tuesday, throwing in uh, somewhat of a front, at least knocking temperatures back down to about where they should be. No big blast of Arctic air, but at least it's not going to be in the upper 70s, close to 80 like it is this week. 71 degrees today at noon, mostly cloudy skies. High temperature is going to make it up to 77 with a lot of clouds, some sunshine. We get up to 80 tomorrow. That's when things peak as far as temperatures. Then they will not be as warm. I don't want to say really dry. Well, they drop down, but it's not going to be like a new big cold snap around here. We are still going to be way above normal, almost 20 above normal for the low temperatures and basically 10 close to 15 for the high temperatures. This these kind of temperatures are the kind that's like you don't know what to do with your AC. Mm -mm. It's yeah. like if you yeah. don't turn it on, it's like muggy yeah. inside, but then you feel guilty turning it on. Yeah, I switched it from heat to cool yesterday and then nothing happened. So I'm, I'm waiting for the rise in temperature <laughs> so it kicks in. Yeah, yeah. and it's like not <clears throat> hot enough to kick in the AC, but yeah, like you said, the humidity and all that moisture. We're so. very confused right now. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> 453, 64 degrees. Up next, an update on the big lawsuit by Taylor Swift fans, plus the new Avatar movie gets ready for a big London premiere tonight night. There's definitely some bad blood between Taylor Swift fans and Ticketmaster, plus, plus the sequel to Avatar officially debuts tonight. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. Swifties are suing. About two dozen of Taylor Swift's fans have filed a lawsuit against Ticketmaster over last month's fiasco involving the presale tickets for Swift's upcoming tour, where millions of fans couldn't get seats. The lawsuit claims Ticketmaster was intentionally deceptive and is part of a monopoly. They want the company fined 2500 bucks per violation, which could mean a fine on each of the two million tickets that were sold. Ticketmaster hasn't responded to the lawsuit. And by the way, Taylor Swift's anti-hero, number one again for a sixth week on the Billboard Hot 100 singles chart. One more week and it'll tie blank space as Swift's longest running, number one. It's really hard to look back on it now and go, what on earth happened? We have a date for what could be an explosive new docuseries about Prince Harry and Meghan. The first three episodes of Harry and Meghan will drop Thursday on Netflix, with the second half following a week later. The series reportedly already causing a royal rift, with some in England not happy that the Duke and Duchess of Sussex are speaking out. Wherever we go, this family is our fortress. 
Later today, we'll get the first reactions to one of the year's most anticipated films. Avatar The Way of Water has its world premiere tonight in London. It opens in theaters a week from Friday. And happy birthday to filmmaker Judd Apatow. He's 55 today, while singer-songwriter Ty Verdes is 27. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. 457 and 64 degrees. Shopping online this time of year makes people more susceptible to scammers trying to steal personal information. We'll show you what to look out for so you don't lose your money. And transparency and accountability were the main subjects again in last night's Uvalde CISD special school board meeting. Why some are calling for one school board member to step down. If you're headed out the door right now, have a great Tuesday morning. The roads look good right now. That was 281 at... Uh, I don't remember where it was. And there's 90 at Nogalitos. You're watching GMSA. Steven's here. We'll be right back. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Online shopping this time of year means scammers are actively trying to take your money. We'll show you some of the common traps shoppers fall for. Outside with live cam right now, we are anticipating some more fog in the area, but nothing like we saw yesterday so far. And if your thermostat is confused, join the club. Good morning, everybody. It is Tuesday, and that would be December 6th. Good morning. Yeah, we walked in. It was cold right. in the studio. You turned it up, up one. Right. It got warm. Hot, now back down. I just turned it down one. So... Um, yeah, I'm not real sure what's going on. What's happening over in your neck of the woods, Mike Osterhage? Well, we have got, <laughs> let's see here if I can get my uh, computer to work. There we go. We've got some fog to talk about this morning. And visibility is down to uh, just over a mile now at Randolph, still at three quarters of a mile. Port SA, not bad at the airport, and just a mile and three quarters there at New Braunfels. So it's not as widespread as what it was yesterday, but obviously where the fog is, it is on the thick side. You want to watch out for a little bit of mist, a little bit of drizzle out there, a lot of fog around Rock Springs, Eagle Pass, and then down around Laredo, but everybody else is doing pretty good, but we still have to be on the lookout for it throughout the rest of the morning. So some fog, mist, very, very mild. Temperatures are in the mid 60s on average right now. Normal high at the airport, 66. Most of the cloudy upper 70s later on today, so definitely on the warm side of things. And then plenty of clouds tomorrow with some sunshine in the afternoon. We'll have mist and drizzle in the morning. We can make it up to 80 tomorrow. It won't be as hot as we go into the weekend, but still well above normal temperatures. And hopefully a couple of little showers here, not a huge rain event, but it'll be more than just this kind of mist and drizzle stuff as we go in toward the weekend. Perhaps something that feels a little more like December way, way down the road. We'll talk about that in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, good morning, Stephen. What's going on? Well, good morning to you, Mike. We are still seeing uh, some quiet roadways out there at 410 at Fredericksburg, but let's get a quick look around town. Uh, now, the situation in terms of the fog, we're catching it on some of these transguide cameras, but for the majority, we have about 20 here in the studio. We're not really catching a whole lot, but keep in mind, there are at least over 200 in and around the Alamo City, so... I'll be scoping through those to find out which ones uh, we may see in a situation pop up. But right now, for now, 410 at Marbach, it's still a pretty quiet start to our Tuesday morning as we get things rolling. But taking you to the map, it's again always expected this early. We're really not going to see any slowdown, so it is a perfect time to take advantage of these empty roadways. And if you're going to roll on through here to the Alamo City, let's check out those travel times because right now, 24 minutes, that journey from Bernie, Bernie is still in the green on I-10 eastbound. Now, a little bit of a slowdown on 281 southbound if you're heading in from Boulevard, 28 minutes. So we're in the yellow there, but I would say there's still no need to hurry. And right now, an I-3 35 southbound. We have about a 26 minute drive time, so not too awful if you're traveling in from New Braunfels again this early in the morning. But it's always expected 410 at Culebra, I 10 at De Zavala. Now, some of these trans guide cameras are picking up some of the fog that we've been talking about, but looks like the camera is down there at 35 at Brooklyn. I'll get our friends at trans guide on the phone, find out what they're spotting, and give you updates on road closures that'll be happening in the next few minutes. Mark Sarah. Stephen, thank you. Despite meeting behind closed doors for several hours, no action was taken by the Uvalde CISD school board Monday night. During its special meeting, a closed door discussion reportedly focused on the board itself and how it operates. That's right. Now, the uncle of Rob Elementary victim Jackie Casares tells our Lee Waldman he wants to see one board member step down. Trust is one of the most safe things we have. The theme of trust, transparency, and accountability sticking out once again in Monday night's only speaker at the Uvalde CISD School Board special meeting. We've got to look at ourselves and we've got to take a look, a hard look, and 
and see what is the best thing for the community, what is the best thing for the family, what is the best thing for the board, and basically, sometimes the best thing to do is see what dignity we have and just resign. While Jesse Rizzo didn't call him out by name at the podium, he made it clear later he was referring to school board member J.J. Suarez. He was one of the officers that was in that hallway. He was one of the officers that elected to walk out. Monday, the board met behind closed doors to discuss the board's operating procedures and members' roles and responsibilities with their lawyers. While no action was taken when they reconvened, Rizzo hopes pressure from the community and other board members will lead to Suarez stepping down on his own. The decisions that he's making, the votes that he's cast, it could potentially hurt the school district in the long run, not just with the trust and faith and stuff like that, but I think, I think the school district would be better off the board members asking him to resign. The board president says their discussions will continue on the board's operating procedures. The next time they'll meet is on December 19th for a regular board meeting. In Uvalde, Lee Waldman for GMSA. A San Antonio based company dealing with some major tech issues. Rackspace says their teams continue to try and determine the full scope and impact of the issue. It sent out alerts last week about issues with their hosted exchange environment, which deals with emails. It means some businesses can't access information or important documents they may have exchanged with others. Exchange hosted email, which is who that particular part is having the problem. And it's a global problem, not a local problem. Rackspace says they've been able to help some customers with the issue, but the problem persists for others. Well, of course, many of us are doing our holiday shopping online these days. It is convenient and super easy. But doing so makes us more susceptible to online scammers, as Alexis Christophorus has some of those top ways. They try to steal your personal information. Tis the season for scammers to steal your personal information online. This year, scams are at an all-time high, and experts say they're more sophisticated than ever. I think in years past, you had a person sitting in their parents' basement, maybe with a hoodie. Things have changed dramatically. It is an organized crime. Social media is a goldmine for scammers, so beware of ads containing suspicious links. Go to that website of that retailer, that bank, that business that you want to do business with. Pick up the phone and call the number on that website. Ensure that it is that website. Check websites for misspellings and poor grammar and look out for fraudsters posing as banks or retailers claiming your order didn't go through. Keep in mind that no financial institution will call and ask you for your credentials. No financial institution or store will ask you for your username, your password. They're not going to ask you to transfer data or transfer money into different accounts. When possible, pay with a credit card for better fraud protection instead of debit or prepaid cards. And trust your gut. If a deal seems too good to be true, it probably is. Alexis Christophorus, ABC News, New York. 507, 64 degrees. It's about to cost more to play new games on your Xbox. We'll tell you how much Microsoft will start charging for new games next year. A 22-year-old camper disappeared at Canyon Lake over the weekend is still unaccounted for. We'll tell you about the clues authorities have found so far. The story this morning is not necessarily widespread fog, but some patchy fog. I think you're seeing some right there on your screen. Mike will have our forecast when we come back. Search efforts continue at Canyon Lake for a 22-year-old student who used to attend the University of Houston. Amir Ali was last seen Friday around 9 p.m. He told his friends he was going for a walk but never made it back to camp. More than 30 of Ali's loved ones made the trip from Houston to try to find him. They've partnered with Search and Rescue San Antonio who have brought out their own canines as well as both aerial and underwater drones. So far, only Ali's phone, wallet and some clothes found near the water have been recovered. We're so hopeful. We hope that, that he's at least alive. I'm trying to keep up mind so I can at least talk to the officers. I can talk, communicate with you guys or anybody, but the parents are completely broken down at this point. Texas Parks and Wildlife say they're assisting the Kamau County Sheriff's Department in the case. If we get an update, we'll let you know. 512 right now, 64 degrees. Real ID is delayed again. Why the Department of Homeland Security is pushing back the deadline to 2025. Plus, we'll check out Google Photos search feature that lets you find people by their face.
brought you home for the holidays. this holiday season give love give style find joy for everyone on your list with macy's gift finder what's the number one retinol brand used most by dermatologists it's neutrogena rapid wrinkle repair smooths the look of fine lines in one week deep wrinkles in four so you can kiss wrinkles goodbye neutrogena Welcome back. Microsoft raising the price of new Xbox games starting next year. ABC's Morgan Norwood has details in today's Tech Bites. In today's Tech Bites, get ready to pay more to enjoy Xbox. Microsoft is raising the price on first party games. Starting in January, full price games like Redfall, Starfield, and Forza Motorsport will cost $10 more, rising to $70. The Department of Homeland Security has pushed back the Real ID rollout again. Enforcement will not take place until spring of 2025. The act calling for Real ID forms of identification following 9-11 created in 2005. It was supposed to go into effect in 2008. Google Photos is testing a new feature that lets you quickly find people by their face in your Google Photos library. The new search feature combines facial recognition with traditional Google Lens features that identifies things like clothing and plants. Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day. All right, morning show family. Uh, uneventful morning yesterday overall. Yes. And we just spotted some lights. Didn't yeah, we? right there along 410 at Austin Highway. You know, in fact, as we were uh, airing that package of text bites, I saw that a crash was actually reported. Let's get a look at that from Transguide. Not a good morning, guys. And actually, from this particular shot, you can see that it is a little foggy out there. 410 at Austin Highway. Uh, we have flashing lights that almost looks like it's on the access road. This just popped up, so I'll get our friends at Transguide on the phone and find out exactly what we are looking at. But for now, I would say it is foggy in this area of town, closer in, closer, closer in to 35. So just be careful as you approach those flashing lights. Move over, slow down. But this does look like it may be on the Axis Road. All right, let's get you to the map. And you see it's right there as we approach uh, the 35 interchange. So just watch out as we get the morning rolling. While we haven't spotted a whole lot of issues, we know that we are seeing some fog in some of those Transguide cameras. But also, we're going to see some road work take place, at least up until tomorrow. I talked about this yesterday, overlay work. Now, this has been current and should wrap on December 14th, but it does begin at 9 in the morning, should wrap at 4 in the afternoon. That I-10 westbound frontage road will see alternating lane closures right there at Ackerman Road. So plan that commute ahead of time. I updated the list of current closures on our website. So ksat.com slash traffic. Head over there and scroll to the bottom of the page for a full list of closures. But for now, we're going to have to try to get some details out of this crash. Doesn't look like the fog is too bad in a lot of other spots, though, Mike. Well, that's the, the deal this morning where it's just very, very patchy in nature and you may turn the corner and run into some of the fog and there's going to be something we'll deal with for the next couple of hours. One thing nice about the weather we're having, uh, you know, not too hot, not too cold. Great for uh, taking Nicholas for a walk on a day like this. And as long as there's no mist or drizzle around. So just kind of keep an eye out for that this morning. You can scan that QR code and, and send in some of your uh, KSAC Connect pictures. So, okay, this picture has now just changed from the last time we saw it. We could see the uh, control tower out there at the airport. So we do have a little bit of fog moving on in, despite the fact that the last report coming in was still 10 miles visibility, but it is starting to kind of creep in in and around the, the near north side of town. Fog fog at Port SA, although that has improved from earlier this morning. Just under two miles visibility, Randolph, mile and a quarter New Braunfels. Not a little bit around Castroville, not bad heading out west and northwest until you get to Rock Springs, Eagle Pass, Laredo, and it's okay along the, the coastal plain. Again, this is very patchy, going to be on standby, if you will, for any sort of advisories. The uh, Weather Service indicated it is obviously monitoring the situation, whether any advisories need to be issued right now. It does not look like that at the time being, but just be on the lookout for more fog to uh, kind of thicken up in the next couple of hours. 64, hello to 65 at the airport. Normal high temperature is 66, though 
do the math. We are way, way above normal. Normal low is in the mid 40s right now, so 20 above normal. We're going to stay fairly steady, maybe fluctuate a couple of degrees in the next few hours. And this looks a lot more ominous than it is. This is just taking into account any sort of mist or drizzle that may be out there with some of that patchy fog and plenty of clouds this morning. Then we start to see some sunshine. 71 at noon and we top off at 77. So we're going to be on average 10 to 15 degrees above normal. Some sunshine, like I said, thrown on in there with the clouds. And, you know, it's not like we're going to be clearing out completely. Just little patches here and there, just enough to get us into the uh, upper 70s later on today. Some folks may actually make it into the low 80s, and that's definitely going to be the situation tomorrow. We'll start off with uh, mist and drizzle in the morning, very patchy in nature, a little bit more in the way of sunshine in the afternoon. There's the really cold stuff up there to the north of us and it just is not coming in here because the upper level winds are moving basically straight west east. There's nothing really to give this a good shove down here. Perhaps by the middle of next week, Tuesday, Wednesday of next week, there are some indications that we may see a front which will bring in some more December Christmassy kind of weather, but uh, anything but that as of right now. 71 degrees, mostly cloudy skies at noon. Watch out for a little bit of fog trying to develop around the area this morning. 77 for a high temperature with mostly cloudy skies, some sunshine thrown in. Then tomorrow, start off just about the same in the mid 60s, well above normal. And then we're going to make it up to 80 in the afternoon. Some morning mist, uh, patchy fog. A little bit of that's going to be possible Thursday as well. Not as warm, but still we're going to be close to 10 degrees above normal for the high temperatures, close to 20 above normal for the low temperatures, even going into the weekend. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. Now it kind of makes me want to have one of those cold snaps again, even though when we had it for two weeks, I was like, I'm over it. I can't decide. Was yeah. it the, the lyric? You can't always get what you want. Story of my life. <laughs> Keep your fingers crossed. <laughs> perhaps something next week. Okay, thank you, Mike. 52165 degrees. I wish y'all could see Mike Osterhage snapping and dancing away right now. How many times have you heard that song so far this year? The answer is a lot for Mike. Not enough. Up next, how Ma Mariah Carey's Christmas classic has returned to the top of the charts. Did you hear Mike attempt to harmonize? It was yeah. awesome. Yeah. yeah. Uh. <laughs> Pick three. What? Pick three numbers: three five zero Fireball seven. Daily four numbers: zero six six four Fireball nine. Your mic's uh, still closed, Mike. <laughs> Catch five two four thirteen twenty thirty. Texas two step four six twenty one thirty two twenty six. Powerball 35, 45, 47, 54, 55, Powerball 14, Power Play 2. Try again in a minute, Mikey. <laughs> 525, it's beginning to sound a lot like Christmas. Thank Chris, thanks yet again to Mariah Carey. CNN's David Daniel has that and more in today's Hollywood Minute. It's become a Yuletide tradition. Mariah Carey's All I Want for Christmas is You is number one on the latest Billboard Global 200 chart. It's the third straight December that the tune, which came out in 1994, has topped the chart. There's a real exchange with the audience. And to not have that, to not have that window to people is so weird. John Waite is best known for such hits as Missing You and When I See You Smile, and for decades of live performances. When the pandemic shut that down, he looked inward, resulting in the documentary John Waite The Hard Way. The musician says he just wanted the film to be honest. I didn't want it to be some sort of puff piece out of Nashville, like where, you know, the struggle of the music business and, and in the end the guy wins, you know. It would mean more to me if it was just left on a on a question mark. John Waite, The Hard Way, is now available on all major streaming services. Back on my feet again in Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. 526, 65 degrees. The Georgia Senate runoff election is today. The candidates are making a final push to get their supporters to the polls. Why this race will have a major impact across the nation. Remembering Kirstie Alley. She died from cancer at the age of 71. We're showing you some of the tributes pouring in for her and a look at her final TV appearance. And some of the nation's top security experts are recommending you delete TikTok from your smartphone. Why the popular social media app might be a serious threat to U.S. national security. 
call 10 of your friends to go vote. Call your father and your mother, your sister and your brother. A big election day in Georgia will tell you why this race could greatly affect Congress over the next two years and what happens if each candidate wins. Family, friends, and community members gather in North Texas town to remember the life of seven-year-old Athena Strand, who was found dead after a FedEx driver is accused of taking and killing her. Outside with live cam, you know how foggy it was to start the work week, and right now it is settling back in. You're looking live right now at uh, one of the shots here in town. It looks like the uh, cloud deck is starting to drop even further. Good morning, everybody. It is Tuesday, December 6th. Good morning. So happy to be here for Steph this morning. Glad you're here, too. We'll talk to Stephen in just a second. Get an update. How are things looking on your end, Mike? You know, starting off this morning, there were just a couple little patches here and there. Unlike yesterday, where everybody, I mean, the entire southern portion of the state was socked in with fog. But as we were talking about and looking at this picture, it is starting to get just slightly foggier, not as crisp as what it was even a half an hour ago, we have temperature right now of 65 dew point 64. So when those two numbers run running neck and neck, you don't have any wind and some other factors, and that's why you start to see some fog. Visibility is still being reported, though, at 10 miles, but obviously uh, pictures tend to tell the story and a lot more than that. So just be on the lookout. Also, as the clouds kind of drop down a little bit, we see some fog. There may be some damp roads out there. Fog around Randolph going up toward New Braunfels. Castorville has also dropped down last uh, about 10 minutes ago. It was at three miles visibility, but it is continuing to uh, drop down a lot around Rock Springs. Go down 35, Catula, Laredo, and not too bad off to the east. We do have some fog, though, along uh, Corpus Christi. Uh, everybody with one or two exceptions in the low to mid 60s, much, much closer. Normal high temperature this time of year is 66 here in town, so obviously a lot closer to that than the normal low, which is mid 40s, almost 20 above normal. Mold is on the, the low side. 71 at noon, 77 high temperature. Like yesterday, we tried to get a couple of holes in the clouds. We'll have a few more later on today, and that's going to be enough to warm us up to 77. And then add to that, yeah, it's going to be even hotter tomorrow, getting up to 80. Plenty of humidity around here. Won't be as hot as we go in toward the latter part of the week and the weekend, but still way above normal temperatures. We'll see if we can find anything that looks more like December weather coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen, damp roads, any problems? Well, we do have these problems here, Mike. Uh, let's get a look here at 410 at Austin Highway. Now, I just spoke to our friends at TransGuide earlier. What we are showing you is that interchange here at 410 at 35, and this is actually along the Axis Road. We know flashing lights are down there at this point. Unfortunately, we're not able to get a clear shot of the vehicle, but we can see those flashing lights are still out there. Uh, again, this is a crash that was reported and we actually have pinpointed that location in the eastbound lanes as you approach that 35 interchange. So you have to be on the lookout. As you just saw that shot at Transguy, we do have a lot of fog in that particular area. So as we give you a wide look, though, everywhere else has been pretty quiet. Uh, now that we are three minutes past 530, we really don't expect to see a whole lot of activity out there. If you're going to be traveling into San Antonio from any of these communities, no need to rush it. 28 minutes. It's still pretty pleasant on I-37 northbound with 28 minutes at this point, a little bit more than half an hour roughly half an hour, I should say, on US 90 eastbound. If you're traveling in from Castroville and that arrival from Lytle on 35, about 16 minutes. So everything is pretty normal there. But as we get it back here to this shot at Transguide, that crash uh, could lead to a possible closure on the access road, but I'll keep a close eye on it right now. It doesn't seem to interfere with any of the vehicles moving because you just saw that Transguide camera shows at least one car is making its way on by without any trouble, guys. Thank you, Stephen. The nation will be watching Georgia today. That's because the Senate runoff there has national implications. As CNN's Amy Kiley reports, the candidates are sending final messages to their supporters. Call 10 of your friends to go vote. Call your father and your mother, your sister and your brother. The Georgia Senate runoff election is today, and the candidates are making a final push to get their supporters to the polls. Incumbent Senator Raphael Warnock has been focusing on young adults. They keep me inspired. They keep me on my toes. And I'm proud of the ways in which the young people all over Georgia are showing up. Republican challenger Herschel Walker has been stumping in rural Georgia. You always have a champion in me because I love you all and we're going to win. Early voting set a new single-day record last week, and the Georgia Secretary of State predicts strong turnout again today. We've actually already had 80,000 people that voted in this runoff that didn't vote in the fall at all. So that's what you're really seeing, is people that were 
kind of sitting up, sitting back and watching things are getting engaged in this race. Today's election has national implications. If Walker wins, the Senate and its committees will be evenly split. If Warnock wins, Democrats will lead committees and have a vote to spare. My focus is why people in both parties are not screaming from the mountaintops as to how important this race is. For Good Morning San Antonio, I'm Amy Kiley. In North Texas, loved ones gathered last night to remember the life of seven-year-old Athena Strand. A prayer vigil was held outside the Wise County's courthouse. Decatur Strand's body was found Friday after she disappeared from her home's driveway earlier in the week. FedEx driver Tanner Horner is accused of kidnapping and killing the girl. He is being held on a $1.5 million bond. Another prayer vigil for Strand is being held tonight at a nearby church. Facebook owner Meta is threatening to remove all news content from its sites if Congress passes a law to allow news organizations to negotiate with tech companies to distribute their stories. The bill would allow news groups to bargain collectively with tech companies to get a larger share of ad revenue in exchange for providing websites like Facebook access to their content. The reports Congress will add the Journalism Competition and Preservation Act to the defense authorization bill that could create an easier path for the legislation to pass. A spokesperson for Meta says if Congress approves it, the company would be forced to remove all news content from its platforms. That's a big deal. The tech industry strongly opposes the bill. The U.S. Secret Service says hackers linked to the Chinese government stole at least $20 million in COVID-19 relief. The hackers raided unemployment insurance funds and small business administration loan money in more than a dozen U.S. states. The Secret Service blames the theft on APT41. It's a well-known group that has schemed on behalf of Beijing for years. It's unclear if this operation was for self-enrichment or for the Chinese government. Since 2020, the Secret Service has recovered more than $1.4 billion of pandemic relief funds stolen from various actors. 537, 65 degrees. TikTok might be a big national security risk. We'll tell you why and what the FBI says could happen if you keep it on your smartphone. Tributes are pouring in for actress Kirstie Alley, who died at the age of 71 following a brief battle with cancer. Up next, a look back at her life and career and her last TV appearance. 65 degrees at 537. Patchy fog is a story this morning. You see a little bit on your screen right there. How will that impact your commute and weather this morning? Mike and Stephen will tell us when we come back. 540 now to the death of actress Kirstie Alley, best known for her role on Cheers, but she was also a beloved mother and grandmother. She died after a short battle with cancer. As ABC's Will Gans reports, her friends and co-stars are paying tribute. Don't you stop loving me. Kirstie Alley, an actress whose career spanned 40 years, perhaps best known for her work in Cheers. Where everybody knows your name. Everybody knew her name, Allie joining the show in 1987 and staying through its final season in 93. She won the Best Actress Emmy Award in 91 for playing Rebecca Howe, giving one of the most rowdy speeches in award show history. I only thank God I didn't have to wait as long as Ted. <laughs> Kirstie Alley was born in Wichita, Kansas in 1951. Alley didn't try acting until she was 30. Her first movie role, the 1982 film Star Trek II, Sir, The Wrath of Khan. May I quote General Order 12? Alley would go on to star in films like Drop Dead Gorgeous and TV shows like Veronica's Closet and Fat Actress. The 71-year-old star became known for her blunt approach off the screen, too. In recent years, debating politics online with strangers. But it's her career that will live on. Ali starred in the Look Who's Talking trilogy of films with John Travolta. <laughs> on Monday, her family sharing news of her passing on social media, writing, We are sad to inform you that our incredible, fierce, and loving mother has passed away after a battle with cancer only recently discovered. And John Travolta paying tribute on Instagram, writing, Kirsty was one of the most special relationships I've ever had. I love you, Kirsty. I know we will see each other again. Allie is survived by her children, True and Lily Parker, who wrote on Instagram, as iconic as she was on screen, she was even more amazing as a mother and grandmother. Will Gans, ABC News, New York.
542, 65 degrees. A popular brand is recalling millions of cleaning products because of a possible bacteria exposure. Up next, we'll tell you which ones are affected. Transcad right now still tracking these uh, flashing lights off of uh, 410 at Austin Highway. Stephen will be back after this. In your morning consumer headlines, the Laundress brand is recalling millions of cleaning products because of a possible bacteria exposure. The items include laundry detergents, fabric conditioner, and cleaning products manufactured between January 2021 and September 2022. The Consumer Product Safety Commission says the products contain bacteria that could cause infections. At least 11 infections have been reported. People with weakened immune systems, underlying lung conditions, or who have external medical devices are most at risk. Consumers are urged to immediately stop using the products and throw them away. The director of the FBI is doubling down on his concerns surrounding the popular social media platform TikTok, saying it poses a serious threat to U.S. national security. FBI Director Chris Wray said the video sharing app, which is owned by a Chinese company by tenants, is collecting data from U.S. users for spying purposes and could gain access to your device through software. Now, we've heard this before. He also warns the Chinese government could manipulate content on the app with its recommendation algorithm. Last month, the FCC commissioner also called for a nationwide TikTok ban here in the U.S. And earlier this year, urged Apple and Google to remove it from their app stores immediately. Experts recommend you think twice before downloading it or especially keeping it on your smartphone. It's 546, 65 degrees. Stephen, I still see those flashing lights at 410 and Austin Highway. Uh, unfortunately, this is still going to be an issue for drivers, Mark. And Sarah, as we get a look there at Transguide 410 at Austin Highway, uh, of course, we are picking up just a little bit of the fog out there, but we really are keeping our focus right there along the Axis Road where we do see those flashing lights. Now, I did speak to our friends over at Transguide. They did tell us this is as you approach that 35 interchange, but because it's so early in the morning, we're not seeing a whole lot of issues out there. And also, it could be because this is on the the frontage road, but taking you to the map, no red to report, but keep this in mind. If you have to travel through there, 410 eastbound as you approach that 35 interchange here, if you're trying to get up 35, maybe heading up towards 1604 in the northeast side or maybe a little further out toward Live Oak. So just be on the lookout there. But thankfully, giving you a wide look at the map, there's not a whole lot else to show you, just a lot of green out there. So it's a great day to get the morning started. I wouldn't say you need to rush out the door, but give yourself plenty of time because yesterday we had a lot of fog out there and today catching it on some of these cameras, not a whole lot of them, but 281 at Jones Maltzberger. The morning is off, but check out uh, some of those other shots. We are picking it up in other areas of town. Yes, sir, we are. Thank you, Stephen. That goodness for KSAT Connect, because many of us haven't seen the moon or the sun in days, it seems yeah, like. Yeah, I'm tired of all this kind of dreary, cloudy, mm -hmm weather mike can yeah, you do something it's, about it's, it no, no it's going to be sticking around for the next uh, few days we'll have little bits of uh, sunshine here and there this afternoon tomorrow but what we're talking about is this picture because the uh, the full moon is uh, technically on the 8th and as you can see there's that little bit it's not quite a perfect circle as of yet but yeah just an absolutely gorgeous picture out there but not going to be seeing too much of this when the moon is in its full phase it rises just as this in the east just as the sun is setting in the west but I said later on today, um, if you're lucky, there may be a hole in the clouds there, but um, wouldn't count on it too awfully much. But great picture. Thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. All right, speaking of pictures, this view has definitely gotten foggier since earlier this morning. It was fairly clear about the half hour, 45 minutes ago. We could actually see the uh, control tower there at the uh, runway or at the airport. And now it is being reported at just a quarter mile visibility out there at the airport. So it has dropped. It was 10 with the at last check. So so really getting thick out there. Castroville mile and a quarter to Randolph, three new Braunfels. So the thickest really in the metropolitan area is, of course, right there at the airport. And then Rock Springs, uh, Catula, Laredo, Corpus Christi has some fairly good fog. Yesterday, we had enough couple of holes in the clouds to get us up to 74. We had some 80s off to the east and then 60s where it was cloudier off to the west. Add to that later on today. So it's going to be mid and upper 70s and a few more 80s around the area, even down around uh, Pleasanton and just right knocking on the door of that from Elmendorf over to uh, Lavernia. Then we are going to be even warmer than this 
going into tomorrow. So this morning, though, temperatures will stay basically steady, fluctuated degree or two. A lot of clouds, some mist drizzle. Some of that fog is continuing to form up and then we're going to be up to 71 at noon. Mostly cloudy skies, which means a little bit of sunshine thrown in enough to get us up to 77 degrees for a high temperature. So we're going to be on average 10 to 15 degrees above normal. There's some of the clouds that are hanging around here other than the low clouds and fog and on the big picture. Yes, there is plenty of wintry weather up there to the north, but notice how everything is pretty much moving just straight west to east. The zonal pattern that doesn't bring about any substantial, any significant changes for our weather. So what you see is what you get. We are definitely staying on the warm side. It does peak tomorrow with temperatures getting up to 80 and then we'll start to moderate a little bit. But with this configuration, there's nothing like uh, all this December kind of Christmassy weather up there to the north is not coming down here anytime soon. Perhaps we get a little taste by this time next week, but just keep your fingers crossed for that. 71 degrees today at noon, mostly cloudy skies. High temperature makes it up to 77 and then tomorrow we are going to make it up to 80. Again, normal high is mid 60s right now, so 15 degrees above normal. Low temperatures will remain anywhere from about 15 to 20 degrees above their normal readings. Then we get into the weekend. We'll still be in the uh, mid 70s, still well above normal. A uh, couple of showers going to be possible. Looks like Saturday and then again on Monday would be the the better chances for some rain. But uh, yeah, ain't December on that graphic. No. I would like it to be. Perhaps by next week. Okay. There are indications. So. Thank you, Mike. You're welcome. Okay. 4, 5, 51, 65 degrees. Criminal Minds is back, and but we'll tell you why it has taken its very dark news story to the streaming world. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, it's election day in Georgia. The runoff in the high stakes Senate race. We are there live with what's at stake. Also, Kirstie Alley passing away overnight. We learned that the Emmy Award winning actress had a brief battle with cancer. We're going to look back on her life and career. Plus, the latest on Harry and Meghan's new docuseries. Our royal insider joining us with how the palace might respond to the new trailer. We're going to have that and so much more coming up right here on GMA. All my years as a profiler, I studied killers, but I never studied what a pandemic would do to them. The Behavioral Analysis Unit takes on a new breed of serial killer in Criminal Minds Evolution. These aren't just connected cases. This is a serial killing network. To me, it was such a smart way of looking at how the last couple of years would have affected A, our heroes, you know, who the office has been shut down. They've been working out in off of their phones and off of each other and just with the resources at hand, but how it would affect a serial killer. I'll grieve in my own way, thank you very much. And I wish other people would respect that. The series also delves into off-screen events during the pandemic that affects the members of the BAU. I think it goes to the thing of like, everybody's got a story and nobody gets a free ride. And this is my story and this is the ride I'm on and this no, this ride has taken a, a bad turn, you know, but that happens. Maybe it's time we call our expert. We promised we wouldn't. I don't know who else could help. God, I hate how easy it is to pick this back up. My character was one of those people who, who expanded while sheltering in place, who like became more of herself, who got to spend more time with herself and, and enjoy her introvertedness, which she is deeply. And, and then I got to do that and now she's sort of like coming out like this different kind of butterfly but you know the wings are still wet and she's like you want me to go look at murder i'm a butterfly i miss the team every day i miss you in hollywood i'm rick damagella happening today a ketak community event a town hall about seasonal depression the holidays can be a tough time with that's why it's so important to know the warning signs of seasonal depression. Ursula Perry will moderate the event and be joined by mental health care professionals. The town hall begins at 2 p.m. on ksat.com. We hope you'll join us. The season of giving is here and several organizations are working towards helping families for the holidays. That includes Toys for Tots. Volunteers and hundreds of local businesses are helping. More than 4,000 families are expected to get gifts this year. That means that more than 10,000 kids who will have presents to open on Christmas Day. Salvation Army kettles are out and about throughout San Antonio metro area. Local businesses and the media, including us right here at KSAT 12, are competing to raise money for families 
in need during the holiday season. No matter how big or small, every donation helps. The Salvation Army says a $50 a donation provides a homeless mother with three kids a one night stay in a shelter, including hot meals. You can donate by scanning the QR code on your screen or heading to ksat.com and we hope you do. Well, coming up right here in the next hour of GMSA, a desperate search for survivors after a deadly landslide in Colombia. We'll look at what happened and what's next for survivors. And later we're talking about the best and worst foods to eat if you have osteoporosis, what you need to know to help stay healthy and strong. San Antonio police left with a lot of questions after a late night shooting. After this break, what investigators know so far and tracking traffic on Transguy, looking at 410 and Austin Highway. There's still a few flashing lights in that vicinity. Stephen Cavazos will get us up to speed coming up in just a matter of minutes. Ahead this hour, lots of questions after a shooting at a West San Antonio apartment complex. We'll tell you how the victim is doing this morning. San Antonio-based Rackspace is facing several tech issues. We'll show you what's at risk. The holidays are here, and that means scammers are out to steal your money right now. What experts say you should be on the lookout for when it comes to online shopping. 65 degrees at 6 o'clock this morning. The story again is fog. Mike will let us know where you can expect it and how long it's going to last for. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. And good morning to you. It is Tuesday. It is December 6th. Sarah in for Steph. And don't forget, if you play Mega, tonight's jackpot is estimated at $354 million. Woo. Cash value, 186.9. That would be a lovely early mm -hmm. Christmas present. Right. And earlier today on my drive in Mike I didn't encounter any of this fog mm -mm. but this has kind of settled in over the next the last hour or two. it really has when I got here about three o'clock this morning there was some fairly thick fog just right around Port SA and that was the only spot in the metropolitan area and now it has started to yeah kind of spread out a little bit more and it's not as widespread nor as thick as yesterday but this picture has definitely changed we could actually I keep saying we could see the uh, control tower out there at the airport off in the distance about an hour ago and and that's not the situation right now. So watch out for some mist and damp roads along with some of this fog. Quarter mile visibility out there at the airport. Two and a half Randolph. Mile and a quarter Castorville. That's dropped down slightly. New Braunfels has actually improved somewhat. And Rock Springs, quarter mile, Eagle Pass, Laredo, and then Corpus Christi. So just a couple of spots where it's a quarter mile or less. No advisories are issued as of right now. But obviously, you may turn the corner and run into some of this fog. It is going to be getting thick thicker before it thins out. So just kind of watch that. It's going to be going back and forth as far as how thick the fog is this morning. 66 degrees right now. That is the normal high temperature this time of year and everybody is up close to the normal high. So way above about 20 degrees above where we should be as far as a low temperature, which should be down in the mid 40s. Mold is on the low side. Update account comes out in about an hour, hour and a half or so and temperatures and we've been down in the low 60s this morning. We may fluctuate this point a couple of degrees here or there. And then we're going to make it up into the low 70s today at noon. Some sunshine will start to squeeze on through. A lot of clouds, kind of like yesterday, a bit more in the way of some sunshine. That's going to help us to get up to 77. So we will be anywhere from 10 to 15 degrees above the normal high temperature. Obviously, we're getting that warm start right now. And it's going to get even hotter tomorrow. How about the rest of the week and the weekend? Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen. If fog mist causing any problems? We always should expect that, right, Mike? I mean, anytime we do have fog out there, things could happen on the roadway that necessarily aren't good things. But we are taking a look at a spot that we where we did see some fog. It's not as foggy as we saw earlier, but we are getting a clearer picture here on this access road where we did have a crash reported earlier. Uh, now, it does look like this is on the end of it. We caught the tail end of this crash, which is good, which means that things are clearing up out there. But still, just be in mind, uh, keep this in mind, 410 eastbound at the 35 interchange is where we were seeing those flashing lights. Uh, no slowdowns in that area because it was so early and also because it was on the access road. As always, we hope everyone's doing okay out there, but thankfully there's really no need to rush as you get the morning rolling here at 603. Things are going to pick up a little bit later. That's expected as we get morning, get closer to morning rush minute by minute. But getting you to these travel times, uh, things are still pretty much in the green. Thankfully, 30 minutes, I-10 westbound and still pretty green from Seguin uh, to the downtown area. 
a little more than half an hour and 87 northbound if you're traveling in from Lavernia and about a 29 minute drive time for our friends down in Floresville. But let's get you back here on a 410 to Austin Highway. That crash has now cleared, so a great update. Just make sure to watch out for crews anytime you see those flashing lights. Mark Sarah. Thank you, Stephen. It's been a busy night for fire crews around town working three separate fires, and here is a live look at one of them. This is the scene right now on Cardiff near I-10. That is on the east side of town. This particular fire started around 4 a.m. Right now we know this home has been destroyed and crews are looking for a 50 year old woman. There were some dogs in the backyard who were rescued. We'll bring you more information as it becomes available. Happening today, the trial for a man accused of shooting and killing a Bear County Sheriff's Office canine named Chucky during a violent chase in 2019 is set to begin. 42 year old Matthew Morellis is charged with multiple counts of aggravated assault against a public servant, interfering with a police service animal, felony in possession of a firearm and evading arrest with a vehicle. This is a story we have been following closely since it happened back in 2019. You can read more about it online at ksat.com. This morning, we're hoping to learn more about a late night shooting that happened on the west side of town. It happened around 8 o'clock last night at the Vista Max Apartments on Callahan near Calabria. Right now, details are limited, but we know a man was taken to the hospital. He is expected to be okay. No word if any arrests were made in this case. The man's in jail this morning after police say he stole his neighbor's car after smashing him in the head with a rock. This happened back in November on San Antonio's east side. According to an arrest affidavit, 26 year old Giovanni Gomez de Hoyos hit his neighbor with a rock and then threatened to hurt him again if he didn't drive him around town. The suspect eventually stole the victim's car. He was later arrested and is facing an aggravated assault charge. His bond is set at $65,000. San Antonio teen who was shot in McDonald's parking lot had to go back to the hospital. Eric Gonthu's family says he was there for three days over complications to his stomach and digestive tract. Gonthu spent seven weeks in the hospital after he was shot in the stomach, lung, and other parts of his body. He was hurt after former SAPD officer James Brennan confronted Gonthu. SAPD fired Brennan, and, and Brennan is now charged in this case. As for Brennan, his trial date is set for February 24th. He faces three felony charges in this case, two counts of aggravated assault by a public servant and one count of attempted murder. San Antonio based Rackspace still dealing with major tech issues. The company says its team, teams continue to try to determine the full scope and impact of the issue. It sent out alerts last week about issues with their hosted exchange environment, which deals with emails, but it means some businesses can't access info or important documents they may have exchanged with others. Exchange hosted email, which is who that particular part is having the problem. And it's a global problem, not a local problem. Now, Rackspace says they've been able to help some customers with the issue, but the problem persists for others. Well, many of us are doing our holiday shopping online these days. It's convenient and easy, but doing so makes us more susceptible to online scammers trying to steal our personal information. ABC's Alexis Christophorus has some tips to avoid these scams. Tis the season for scammers to steal your personal information online. This year, scams are at an all-time high, and experts say they're more sophisticated than ever. I think in years past, you had a person sitting in their parents' basement, maybe with a hoodie. Things have changed dramatically. It is an organized crime. Social media is a goldmine for scammers, so beware of ads containing suspicious links. Go to that website of that retailer, that bank, that business that you want to do business with, pick up the phone and call the number on that website. Ensure that it is that website. Check websites for misspellings and poor grammar and look out for fraudsters posing as banks or retailers claiming your order didn't go through. Keep in mind that no financial institution will call and ask you for your credentials. No financial institution or store will ask you for your username, your password. They're not going to ask you to transfer data or transfer money into different accounts. When possible, pay with a credit card for better fraud protection instead of debit or prepaid cards. And trust your gut. If a deal seems too good to be true, it probably is. Alexis Christophorus, ABC News, New York. 
Get ready to pay more for Xbox. Microsoft raising the price of first party games. Uh, starting next month, full price games like Redfall, Starfield, and Forza Motorsport will cost $10 more, rising to $70 a game. Google Photos testing a new feature that lets you quickly find people by their face in your Google Photos library. New search feature combines facial recognition with traditional Google Lens features that identifies things like clothing and plants. All right, it's 609 and 65 degrees. Still to come on GMSA, some Cibolo area mechanics have a new friend after making a likely discovery under the hood of an SUV they were working on. We'll explain. And car rental company Hertz will now pay nearly $200 million in a massive settlement over false allegations of stolen vehicles. We'll tell you more about that. Outside with live cam as we get your Tuesday rolling here on GMSA and the fog has started to roll in at least so some of these camera shots with our live cams and trans guide cameras around the metro area. We'll be right back.